Hey there magic one, welcome to your weekly tarot reading, I hope you're doing really well. I just wanted to drop in, show up and share a few things with you. Uh, I wanted to let you know that the March monthly readings of course they're done, they are up and live. Uh, you might want to check yours out for your zodiac sign, for your sun, your moon, your rising, maybe even your Venus. Um, if you want to, they are there. There's also an extended version so if it does resonate you can get more detail. The extended can be accessed by clicking the link down below when you do watch the monthly reading that is. I'm also having a sale. I am having an Equinox sale on the initiation. Now that is my immersive learn tarot journey. And I'm having that sale because on the 21st of March, we begin the new astrological year. Now this is a great time to start the new, to begin a new cycle, to leave behind what hasn't served you, maybe from the past couple of years while we have been through it. So if you want to join me for that, I am having a special prize on that it will be running from March the 21st through to March 31st so you've got 10 days and it will be closing at midnight Australian Eastern Standard Time on the 31st now in that course I teach my signature process for reading tarot from the heart and I call that the mystic key now um, I've had students come to me that say, well, I actually kind of know some of the meanings of the cards and that kind of thing. I just don't know how to put it all together. Well, that's what I feel, you know, is my gift to help people with. Um, but if you are a beginner from scratch, you know, we go through all the meanings of the cards as well. You get resources for that. There's videos, uh, there's practices, online learning modules that have been really beautifully created. So you'll get immediate lifetime access when you sign up. You will also get direct access to me through my karmic community community over on Facebook. So if you'd like to learn how to really connect more deeply with your intuition and guide yourself um, through your life decisions, that is a great tool for that. You can find me on social media as well, Facebook and Instagram. Please use the link down below for Instagram though. There is a fake account which funnily enough has more subscribers than me and will ask you if you want a reading. I would never ask you if you want a reading. It's a, it's a calling to request a reading. But if you do want a personal reading or healing, my website links down below as well and you can see what I do offer there. Hit subscribe if you haven't already. That way you'll know when I post new videos it's a great energy exchange between us like share comment all of that I'm wishing you so much love and magic once again let's head to your reading Gemini, welcome to your tarot reading for March 28th through to April the 3rd. Let's see what may be on the cards for you. I've got the nine card block here, three for the recent past, three for the current energy, and three for your near future outcome. I've got a selection of oracles, a lead tarot energy, and I've turned over the bottom of the deck for you. Uh, this week, Gemini, we are working with the Sacred Creators Oracle, the Moonology Oracle, the Moon Child and Star Child Tarot, uh, which are my personal faves by Danielle Knoll, and the Radiant Rider Weight. So we've got some big energies here, you know, Death, Wheel of Fortune, Ten of Swords. Um, it feels like something is really coming to a head, coming to a climax this week or in the weeks surrounding this reading, because uh, timing can be a bit fluid. We have to keep in mind this is destined change, wheel of fortune, okay? You know, the universe is really saying, Gemini, that it's time for you to shift into your next karmic lesson, onto your next karmic path. And, you know, life really is a series of, you know, cycles, like endings and beginnings, endings and beginnings. Like sometimes in the comment section, section people say, why is there, there's always just so many, it's always about endings and beginnings. Yes, absolutely, because that is pretty much, you know, what we're doing. It's like a revolving door of life, whether it's, you know, in our relationships, not for everybody, but, you know, in our work, within ourselves, it's all about navigating those seasons and cycles. So let's jump into the oracles, Gemini. I've got uh, here from the Sacred Creators. Get back to the elemental and fierce serenity. So it feels like you're coming back um, into a place of, of peace and balance within yourself. I'm feeling a very soothing energy actually in this reading. Like obviously these things are going to come to a head. But I'm noticing like all the, the blue here which is a very calming kind of color. It feels like you know you're going to 
maybe overcome a situation that has been causing you conflict maybe you've been kind of fighting for it you've been fighting the battle but now that is kind of you know basically it's resolving i mean your moonology card says a personal issue reaches resolution it says full moon in cancer so i think a situation has been causing you a lot of emotional turmoil and you know you're going to be able to come back into a place of balance fierce serenity for me also means that there is a lot of power in actually approaching things peacefully and you know not letting things escalate not you know being triggered not being reactive and that kind of thing there's also this get back to elemental which is get back to basics basics come back to simplicity don't overcomplicate things this week so the lead energy gemini is the nine of wands and the Nine of Wands for me is a, a long fought battle or struggle, okay? It's kind of like you've been really pushing or working very hard to try and keep something together that I feel wants to end anyway. So for example, you know, now it, it, this is a general reading, you know me, I read the energetic pattern, it's up to you to apply it to your life area, but this could be, you know, really trying to to fight to keep a relationship alive that maybe has, you know, reached um, the end of its growth curve, you've outgrown it, um, you've got fundamental values, differences, that kind of things, that, that kind of thing, but you know, you're still kind of trying to, to hang on to it and maybe sacrificing a lot of yourself in the process. In our career, it can be, you know, we're overworked and maybe underpaid in that job, but you know, we just keep on going, keep on pushing, or maybe somebody's dangling the carrot. It kind of feels like it could even be a financial struggle with the eight of, of pentacles here. It feels like at the moment you're on the hamster wheel and you're trying and trying and trying, working and pushing into the situation, but you're not getting you're not getting back what you truly should be from the situation. So the cards are saying, well, with the nine of wands, you are one wand, one action. Um, one communication, whatever it is, away from the Ten of Wands, you know, releasing a burden, releasing a weight through closure. And you've kind of, you, you've got the battle scars here to prove it. I feel like at this stage, you are the one, Gemini, that is the martyr of the situation. So Eight of Pentacles is here. This could be in your work sector for some of you. I'm also feeling love. But Eight of Pentacles shows, I feel like you have been maybe this, this is a bit of an uneven uh, input of energy here i feel like maybe you are the one that's been fighting the hardest to keep this going and um maybe been met by you know resistance uh or, or lack of trying or lack of willingness to change or transform from from the other party or lack of actually coming to the party with maybe what you have asked for so jumping into the reading gemini wheel of fortune death card nine of cups death of course is the card of Scorpio and it and it stands for transformation too. So I feel like what we're looking at here, Gemini, is a destined ending that foreshadows you moving into happiness, contentment, wish fulfillment. Okay. It feels like everything that you've hoped, dreamed, and wished for is on the other side of this situation. And the cards are saying that it's divine timing or destined timing for this wheel of karma to shift. And which way is it shifting? Well, it's shifting towards an ending. The death card really says that this has had its summer, had its season, had its day, the situation, you know. And it's like every situation, whether it's, a, you know, a, a relationship or a job, and, and unless it's a twin flame relationship, you know, we, we come together in a situation and it's all fresh and new, right? We're planting the seeds, we're learning, we're growing, it feels fantastic. We then have the summer where you know, those, what we have uh, invested in has grown and, and it's the height of it, you know, we're, you're really enjoying it, we're settling in, it's all flourishing. But essentially, you know, the fall and winter always comes where, you know, the gloss wears off, things die away, and then at that point there's a decision. Do we, you know, keep growing? Do we keep investing in this? Do we keep working on it? Or do we allow it to come back to the earth, back to the elemental, uh, and then basically plant seeds elsewhere? So I feel like the death card is saying that, you know, there's the end of that natural cycle, the evolutionary natural cycle of this. 
And in order to transform your reality, transform your life, you need to surrender to the ending, which is inevitable. Well, we see the sun energy just peaking there, you know, and we know the sun is the most positive card in the tarot deck. And, you know, it seems that a positive new chapter is on the other side of this. Um, I also feel that once you've initiated this ending, that's, you know, that's the hardest part of the battle over. I actually feel like you've 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 fought the hardest part of this battle and it's the acceptance of the ending as soon as you reach acceptance whether you've communicated it initiated it or made it happen or not the hardest part is done because you know you will be moving ahead so it feels like the ending of a karmic contract and the beginning of the new now let's come down to focus energy i've got ace of cups page of wands and the five of cups now the ace of cups actually came um, it came in in reverse. I normally just keep them upright for, you know, presentation purposes, but I always take that to co into consideration when, um, I'm reading. So I feel like, I feel like this week you're really going to be feeling into that ending and grieving for the loss. Um, this situation definitely fulfilled you for a period of time, right? And, but there's a, there's a, a message here that it won't continue to fulfill or fill your cup, right? And an Ace of Cups is actually a card of transformation. So in reverse, it means the growth is kind of done here. We can't transform the situation. Instead of like filling my cup, it's actually beginning to empty it. You know, when we start to fight and struggle for a situation, um, it starts to become draining on our energy, taxing. And if we stay in that negative energy long enough, we can get to the Ten of Swords energy, which can be, you know, adrenal fatigue, stress-related issues, you know, immunity going down, um, mental health, anxiety, depression. It's it's all connected. You know, our, our health, our physical health and mental health is, you know, really so strongly associated with, you know, our levels of happiness, fulfillment, you know, and, and contentment in the world. So I feel like, you know, your cup is emptying here, right? But... Yeah, the cup is em emptying and you are grieving, I feel, for the loss here. Um, I think you had plans to really grow more or create more in this situation, but the universe has had over uh, other, other ideas for the situation, okay? So you can see here that the person in the Five of Cups is grieving that loss, but the cards are saying there are new opportunities, partnerships, connections that maybe are just behind you. Now, I say just behind you, say, well, I've just, if I'm breaking up with someone, I don't want to meet someone tomorrow. Well, I actually feel that because you've been struggling with, with this for so long, there's been a part of you that's maybe even done a lot of the grieving within the situation. A lot of people do come out of long-term relationships and meet someone really immediately because they'd actually like emotionally moved on or disconnected from it, you know, a couple of years, you know, before they actually go through with the ending. So that is something that is quite possible here as well. The thing about the Five of Cups is that we must um, try not to stay in the black cloak energy, which is, you know, the depression, the anxiety, the sadness, the grief, the guilt. That's why there's that saying, you know, the past is the thief of the present, because, you know, if we're staying in those emotions, like grief, sadness, depression, they are very low on the emotional frequency scale. They're a very dense energy. And if we're putting that energy out into the world, we will attract other dense energies, right? Because the universe is always matching. Now, other dense energy might be situations that validate for us that we live in lack and that could be an opportunity that could be in money that could be in love right so even though the the life area can be different what we're attracting the energy will be the same so we really need to move into that nine of cups energy joy bliss happiness love and then if you notice that people that kind of run that vibe they have pretty balanced lives across the board yeah they have challenges and struggles but they quickly move into you know a resolution and don't sit in that energy because if you've been unhappy and struggling for a while in the situation whether it's work or whether it's love for you Gemini I guarantee that there's um like a blockage or like a damming of the energy in another life area as well because how we show up in one area is how we show up across the board so the page of wands here is here and this really indicates to me that there is new growth 
on the other side of this situation. This is also a card of good news as well, or a good news communication. You know, maybe communicating this ending is going to go better than what you think, um, because I feel the other person hasn't been coming to the party anyway. It feels like new manifestations are just on the other side of this, and there's one last action, one last communication that you need to have to bring this to Ten of Wands, well, in this case, perhaps Ten of Swords. So yeah, it does still feel like a painful ending with the Ten of Swords, um, and that's because you've stayed in this so long, Gemini. But again, we see the Sun energy on the horizon, this time, you know, a little bit more, meaning the new dawn, the new day, the new beginning is really, really close, and, you know, Source or Spirit is watching over you. Now we've got the King of Pentacles, Five of Swords in reverse. This could be the other party that you're dealing with. It is a Taurus energy. It could also be Capricorn, Virgo. If it's not one of those signs, the King of Pentacles is somebody who is quite powerful. Uh, maybe when they're out of, out of balance, they can be controlling. Um, it could be somebody who holds a certain amount of power over you. Maybe with the money, maybe with you know, they own the house that you live in, maybe they're, they're your boss, mentor or manager. So I can feel like you've kind of got a lot at stake here and that's why you've really fought for it. And also it's very difficult for you to have the communication with this person. But Five of Swords in reverse really indicates that the, the struggle is almost over. You know, it's going to, to reach resolution here. And generally with the Five of Swords, it's a, it's a lose-lose situation, okay? And it's not really a matter of, you know, do I walk away? It's like, when do I walk away? It's inevitable that we have to remove our energy. We actually have to leave the battleground to resolve it. So that's what I, I see. It's an inevitable ending. Seven of Swords, yeah. And I feel like if we, if we don't, you know, overcome the conflict, really, like, what we're going to be doing is betraying ourselves, Seven of Swords, right? There could even have been a betrayal um, that 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 made the the battle erupt. Okay, got the Knight of Cups here. Yeah, I mean, and the Knight it was in reverse as well. So I feel like there's going to be no apologies. There's going to be no reconnection. I feel that maybe it's actually what you both want. Nine of Pentacles, and I see you emerging in a solo energy but actually finally energized this is a butterfly emerging energy finally on your own you know can make new plans independent successful shining bright feeling healthy again feeling happy again and running that high vibe energy that's going to shift so many other areas of your life gemini okay well i'm going to leave it there and i hope that you enjoyed this reading uh, and gave you some insight Gemini I do wish you all the best with the situation drop me a comment if you're called to share I do read them all keep in mind that uh, it is a general reading it is not my intention at all to create a reading that resonates for all of you it reaches those it's meant for hit subscribe if you haven't already um, that way you'll know when I post new videos I also help support my channel which is a great energy exchange between us. You can also find me on Facebook and Instagram. Um, the links are down below the video. Um, what else? I think that's it. <laughs> I'm going to see you back here for another reading next time, Gemini. Bye for now.